Hello guys, Turtlelags here bringing you another AFK Journey video. I figured that I would actually film this offline because it's such an important topic and I know that a lot of you guys have commented about my screen quality which every time I think it could not possibly get worse, it gets worse. I actually traveled from Mostar, Bosnia to Sarajevo, Bo Bosnia about two days ago and the hotel internet is so monka as to stream from. So I figured that for such an important topic such as you know having a proper arena PvP defense, I figured that I would f uh, film this offline and make it as concise as possible. Basically the structure of this video is I'm going to dive right into what I believe to be the best defensive team and show you my defense record and show you some replays as well as kind of comment on the replays that way you guys understand exactly how this defense works and how it's able to secure as many defense wins as I have been accomplishing uh, these past few days. And of course, I do want to preface to s by saying that um, this defense, while it may be effective today, might be obsolete in a couple days. So whenever I find that my uh, opponents have curated a team that beats mine, I will create another defense that beats their offense, if that makes sense. So this may require several updates, because as you know, Arena PvP is constantly evolving, and as you can see, I am top 5 in Arena, and it is really, really competitive up here. Uh, but without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. So uh, this is my team formation. Basically, uh, I am using Thorn as a tank, I have Aaron as my grouper slash magic defense shredder i have damien for the heals damien's really nice because he blinds he stuns when the chariot dies the chariot gets resummoned whenever uh, damien ults so this is very very important if say you're facing off against an opponent who has say like a vala team uh then you know the one unit who you can give up you know and be kind of like the bait for Vala in order to keep your other teammates alive. Uh, Damien's perfect for that. Not to mention with his Mythic Plus ability, uh, the emergency support, he is able to increase the haste of any allies, uh, you know, whenever nearby, whenever uh, your chariot emergency support heals one of your allies that has gone very low in HP and uh, this can be triggered very early on and this can allow you to win the how should I say the war so to speak in who maintains control first and this is going to be the theme of this video all the teams that I will present to you um, team ideas will have some element of control that's extremely important but here not only do i have damien as a healer i do also have haywin as a healer haywin is very important because she can be cc immune she does the prayer rain where uh, she provides at ex weapon level 15 plus a 36 percent magic defense shred or i'm sorry what the hell am i talking about sorry a 30 percent uh, damage reduction which is very important for stabilizing in addition to the burst heals, in addition to her ability to apply revitalize to your allies, which makes the potency of your subsequent heals even more effective. And then finally you have um, Scarlita, who is basically the crux of this team. Basically what Aaron does is he groups, you know, magic defense shred, and while Scarlita is a physical attacker, Aaron himself is able to boost his own attack by effectively 50 5%, or I should say, he shreds 55% magic defense, which helps his own damage. Uh, and then um, with him grouping every now and then, he is able to keep everyone clumped together. That way, when Scarlita slams down to stun enemies, you know, multiple of them get stunned for about four seconds. And when Scarlita starts like doing that whack, you know, uh, you know, she's able to whack multiple enemies and can can potentially yeet a couple enemies off the map with her execute. So that's essentially uh, how this team functions. The deep, the damage dealers are Thorn, Aeron, and Scarlita. Scarlita, additionally, in addition, I'm sorry, to uh, being able to, you know, stun and yeet enemies off the map and do high damage, actually multi-target damage, but she can also, while she is in the air at the start, She's able to quickly apply a shield to any allies that are in the red. And not only that, but she also grants 
your allies a half of her physical and magic defense when you have her supreme plus. I do believe that in order for this team to work on defense, what you will need is an EX-10, Aeron EX-10, Heywin, probably EX-10 or 15 Scarleta, EX-10 Doran, and uh, EX-10 Damien. I do think this is all very important. The higher level your Scarleta, the better, because the higher the EX weapon level, the more lenient the criteria is for your Scarleta to yeet enemies off the map. And this is very important when you're trying to yeet a really bulky Haywin or a really bulky Thorn or Granny off the map. Very important. Uh, and then uh, if you don't have Scarleta, instead of Scarleta, what you can do is uh, Arden. So Arden, he... I. From time to time, I do have Arden instead of Scarleta because Arden, what's good about him is that he is able to crowd control and he can, as a, a magic a AoE damage dealer, is able to capitalize on Aeron's magic defense shred. Uh, the reason why I go with Scarleta is because Scarleta applies the shields and she applies, in my opinion, a little bit more offensive pressure than Arden, but Arden does a lot of damage but the problem uh, with having Arden on offense nowadays and also as defense as well is that Arden like the whole Arden Aeron Carolina archetype which was the case for my server server 25 maybe like two three weeks ago the reason that was so effective was because you had the perfect balance of offense and defense um, because you had the crowd control from Aeron Arden and Carolina because Carolina can freeze uh, Arden can entangle vines and Aeron can group enemies together do the magic defense shred and just keep the enemies clumped together uh, however uh, what is happening now is that a lot of started off with like two people and champions doing this and then all of a sudden there's maybe like 10 12 people doing it now where you basically have Haywin Damien as a core because what will happen is and I'll show you replays of this is that the enemy will get your your party's HP low with really aggressive offense and then what will happen is Scarleta will when she, when she comes down she's going to slam down to the ground anyone caught within that slam which will be multiple enemies by the way because your Aeron's going to group them right and with this map the two walls it encourages it basically cause forces your enemies to funnel to the middle and center of the map, which further helps with Scarleta's ability to catch multiple enemies and stun them for four seconds. So when Scarleta comes down, you know, maybe KOs one unit or two units and stuns the other units, uh, your Haywin by that time will have her ultimate up to apply the 36% damage reduction, as well as the burst heals to uh, top off the HP of all your allies. And by the way, around this time, uh, depending on how the match goes, your Damien's Chariot will probably have died once, uh, just from the sheer offense of the enemies. But then Damien will resummon the Chariot, and this will allow him to, you know, further stun the enemy, blind them, you know, heal, you know, supplement Haywin's healing. It's really effective, uh, this team. Usually when you have a defense like this, what I typically do is have, I have Damien in the very back. Basically, if the opponent is playing Vala, and by the way, Vala, there's more champions, league players who are actually running Vala. They run Vala with like Burial or Vala with say like Diamo or something like that. I can talk about it in on an, another video and you'll probably see replays of that too. Uh, so. Anyways, uh, this is basically the defense, and then you'll round it out with a confining spell, which locks down three enemies, imprisons them periodically, making them unable to move or act, which is very powerful. It adds a little bit of RNG, because if you're able to imprison some crucial offense, like, say, an opposing Aeron, or if you, uh, you know, bind, say, like, like a... I don't know. Basically, the confining spell will always catch a very important unit, and uh, there's some, you know, some, like let's say, if your opponent is relying on say only Vala to deal damage, or like, I don't know, Dionel to be the main damage dealer, if he gets caught in as one of the three 
enemies imprisoned. This can really relieve pressure from your team to further keep all teammates alive. And I should actually, before I show the replays, I do want to add one more thing, which is that there's two main ways to win. One way is by actually killing the opponent, which you can actually do with Aaron, Thorin, and Scarleta alone. Sometimes even Damien picks up KOs because his stun actually hits pretty hard. And he usually hits a back unit, back row unit, which can KO like, say, an opposing Arden. I've seen that before. I My chariot has won a match before because I, I remember there was one match where four of my guys died, four of their guys died, and I, it was like burial versus the chariot, and I knew, it just knew my chariot would lose. And then my chariot shoots the stun, the airplane, and then like KO'd the burial, and I won. So um, to some extent, Damien can also pick up KOs, or at least soften the enemy enough for Scarleta to yeet them off the map or something like that. So, sorry, I'm a little sick. I apologize. Uh, all right. So anyways, uh, let's go ahead and show you some replays. All right, so here are my defenses. So uh, the reason why it took me so long to decide to finally record this video is because I started to notice that my team was getting wins on defenses, but I was still losing 70% of my defenses. Uh, and this was back in the day when I was using Arden on defense, but once I swap, uh, swapped, say, Arden with like a Haywin, then all of a sudden I was winning way more defenses. Uh, as you can see, so I typically have three people who are farming me each day. Uh, one is Alucard, who is a Leviathan, uh, or around my power level, Lyco a Leviathan, and then Hermit. Oh, there's actually four people who farm me on a daily basis now. Um, yeah. And as you can see from my wins last night, uh, let's see. So, uh, Alucard attacked me five times. He won three matches and lost two. And actually, I gained 26 points, and he gained 24 points. So he had a net loss of two points, like five attacks used on me. Okay. And then Lyco D, usually he attacks me way more, but I think that uh, lately he's been under pressure from one of my guildmates who is also a Leviathan, so he's been more particular about who he attacks. I think he attacked me once, lost 13 points, and was like, okay, today's not the day where I risk trying to, you know, attack Turtle. So he attacked me once, lost, and then moved on with his life. Uh, Hermit attacked me four times. He actually lost three times against me. And by the way, the way you guys can tell whether it's an offense or defense, if there's a she green shield icon, that means that I had a def like they attacked me. Uh, so Hermit attacked me four times, and he lost three matches. So you know I netted uh, tw 16 plus 9, 25 points, and he, or I won 25 points. He lost 12, or he won 12 points. So. I netted 13 points from that, those defenses, and he used up four attacks, right? And then G.O.D., uh, yesterday I got fed up that he was attacking me every day, so I decided to attack him, and I figured out how to consistently win against him, so I think I farmed him, like, I think I used, like, six attacks on him, uh, and then he, like, retaliated while I was sleeping and was unsuccessful. So, you know, he attacked me twice, lost both times. And um, sometimes when you... Are being attacked consistently by the same time or by the same person uh, if you are strong enough like if they're around the same power level as you or maybe slightly more in strength you can actually retaliate some people will back off a little bit if you just show them what's up you know uh, so um, but there's a lot to defenses I'll show you some replays and then kind of go into more depth as to uh, what you need to do outside of arena in order to prepare your account to actually fend off attackers. So uh, let's go ahead and show a uh, Alucard attack. So he attacked me five times, right? So this is my team right here. So I run a Damien, a Haywin, an Aaron, Doran, and Scarleta. And you guys may be thinking like, oh, Turtle, of course you're in top five because you have three Paragons. Well, let me tell you, my all my enemies who attack me have five paragon ones i only have three uh and um 
Not only that, well, actually, I have two. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have three. Well, I have four now, but um, for my defense, I have three Paragon ones. And uh, as you can see here, Alucard has five Paragon ones. And not only that, but their EX weapons are actually higher than mine's. Like, his Scarleta is an EX weapon level 20. Mine's is EX weapon level 18, you know? Or, like, you know, his uh, Damien is EX weapon level 15, and mine's is only EX weapon level 10. Uh, so, and, and his Damien's Paragon, and mine's is not. So, you know, how is it that out of five attacks from him, I managed to win two. Well, let's go ahead and watch the replay so you guys can see. I'll go ahead and slow it down. So he's basically running the exact same offense as my defense, but this team on defense actually has a significant advantage. As you can see, my Scarleta is shielding my... I'm the one with the red HP bar. My Scarleta, while in the air, is applying shields to my party members, and at Supreme Plus is also able to grant uh, you know, half of her physical and magic defense. Uh, and as you can see here, all five of my teammates are still alive. My Haywind has healed, so now my party members have 36% damage reduction. And I'm doing as much as I can on offense, but as you can see, uh, you know, he's the one in the green. To be honest, you know, there's a lot of RNG with this. Sometimes I just outstall him, like the timer goes to zero, but in this case, I think I actually kill him. And some of you guys may be wondering, like, how is this possible? Well, the thing about Scarleta is that she introduces a lot of... She's basically the X Factor. Because what ends up happening... I'll go ahead and show you another replay as I keep yapping. So, um, yeah, so here, here's one where I lost. Uh, and I'll just keep explaining. So, usually the party who is able to get their... Hey, their Scarleta to slam down second will be the one to win. So I lost this match, so I'm willing to bet my Scarleta went down first. Let's find out. So both of our Scarletas in the air. I think. Oh, he gets. Ah, uh, he gets his. Uh, so who stunned who first? Hmm. It's really hard to tell. Okay, anyways, there's a lot of RNG involved. Sorry, guys, I couldn't explain that match. Um, remember that uh, in this game, you know, everybody has a crit value and that sort of thing. So sometimes, and also uh, something I was discussing with one of my guildmates. I'll go ahead and sh keep showing you replays so you kind of get a flavor of how this defense holds up. So I win this defense. He's, in, he's green, I'm red. Uh, and you can watch how this plays out. So, um, one thing that adds to the variability of matches is that when you attack, you gain energy, but when you get hit, you also gain energy. So sometimes you'll kind of wonder, like, why did the enemy Haywin get his ult off before mine's did? Okay, so in this case, my my uh, Scarleta clearly went down first. Uh, so how... Yeah, and hit... Well, his, since he's Paragon, so I think he's getting everything off first. However, sometimes I just stabilize. Actually, this might be the match where he's unable to kill me. We'll see. But really, it is just RNG, like who attacks who. And, you know, Thorn can hit pretty hard. So if he, if my Thorn picks up a KO on his Scarleta, usually that's a wrap and then vice versa. Okay, it looks like I took down his Scarleta and that's where... Uh, well, my Scarleta went down too. So I'm just kind of curious how I won. Oh, I, well, part of the thing is that uh, his Thorn decided to attack my two healers, but his ultimate actually hits less if I do less damage to him. Uh, so I, I think based on just the matchups, like how, you notice how there were like two mini groups of battles in, in this particular scenario, uh, I think... Well, actually, I think to be frank, I just outlawed. I just basically stalled. So that's the thing about this team, which is great, because there's, as I mentioned before, two ways to win. One way is to defeat the enemy. Another way is to not die. So in this particular match, I did not die. So he lost. Yeah. So uh, when you, once you reach uh, the Champions League, uh, whenever you face an enemy that is running both a Haywin and, an, uh, and a Damien, you want to think twice about attacking them because I've attacked people who were 10 ranks below me 
who had 100k less strength than me, and I lost to them because I didn't have enough firepower to defeat them. Yeah, so he just couldn't defeat me. So the, the timer goes to zero, I still have four peop three people alive, maybe? Four people alive, and uh, yeah, so he lost there. Okay, so now uh, we move on to Lyco D. So how did, so what did Lyco D run? So he's running a very spicy, and this is kind of a new meta team, by the way. Uh, so it's Laika, Dionel, Scarleta, oh, and his Scarleta's Paragon 2, by the way. So my Scarleta's Paragon 1, his Scarleta's Paragon 2. The way you can tell is that, so this is a Supreme Plus, right? Just a normal gold frame. Uh, and then if you have like a magenta spike above and below in the center, that's Supreme, that's uh, Paragon 1. Yeah, so his Dionel's Paragon 1 and his Scarleta is Paragon 2. And Paragon is grants you useful stats that uh, really help you out in Arena, such as being able to regen more HP, being able to reduce more damage taken, uh, or, yeah, reduce more damage, mitigate more damage. And then there's things also like, uh, you know, reducing their enemy regen, really powerful stats. Uh, so, you know, you would think that a Leviathan like him, who's been probably, like, I don't know, at least 10k uh, on this game, would beat me, right? But he actually lost, so we can see how my team held up. I almost want to say the timer probably ran out. Let's find out. Also, another thing too, and I don't think he realizes this, is that the, the Awakening spell, the blue spell, has a bug. It has a bug in that normally your back row would not be crowd controlled, but my confining spell actually still crowd controls the back unit sometimes. So it's a bug in the game. I don't think he's aware of it, but I think he's also running this spell because Dionel benefits from attack speed from Leica. Basically the way Dionel teams work is that Dionel, in order for him to activate his mythic plus, uh, he needs to be able to Oh, I actually defeated him, maybe. Yeah. Wow. That is actually very surprising. But that can happen. That can really happen. Okay, so I did win a defense against Lyco D. And then Hermit, he runs a very spicy Burial Scarleta team. I'm actually not... I'm actually a bit surprised that he didn't run the... Um, what's Shima calls? Uh... What's her name? The light bearer who goes into invisibility mode. I'm sorry, I'm blanking out. Usually he runs her instead of Arden, which I think is a better team. Like this team actually doesn't have synergy. I don't. I don't understand why he ran this team. But uh, anyways, so and he's also running a terrible spell. Guys, run the confining spell. Don't run the awakening spell. I'm just uh, the awakening spell is partially bugged right now. I'm still trying to figure, so I think what this is, is that he's using Scarleta to shield the, um, to shield the, I'm sorry, shield the shadows produced by Burial. Yeah, but still, I, and I, I guess used Arden for a little bit of crowd control, but typically you want to run Arden with Aeron in order to boost his damage, because doing baby damage, while it will defeat a lot of teams will not defeat mines because I'm running a double healer. One healer that revives every, you know, every time he casts his ult, you know, via the chariot, and another healer who reduces damage by 36%. I, I don't I don't understand why he ran this team. Yeah, see all my all my units are still alive. So, okay, so that's one of four defenses against Hermit. Okay, and then G.O.D. Oh, G.O.D. runs the team that I think is better. Uh, yeah, so this team, uh, he runs on defense, which is actually kind of not that great uh, because you can counter his Vol, you can counter his Rainier. Uh, but this team is very solid. I, I do think this is one of the better teams. Uh, and actually, he is uh, around my power level. Um, I might actually be higher level than him, but I do consider him one of the best attackers in the game uh, in, ter like, in terms of skill level. Basically the way this team works is that you have Scarleta buffing you know, 
applying shields to your units including Vala and you know he has an EX weapon level 20 Vala very heavily invested he's looking to pick up KOs and uh, this is why I positioned my Damien in the back um, and we'll see how I won the defense I'm actually curious how I won okay he, everyone's running the awakening spell I, I think that is a mistake okay yeah so his Vala already killed my chariot as you can see uh, but the chariot like my that's the beauty of Damien Damien can resummon his chariot pretty quick so I think around this time my Haywin's about to die but then I think I stay oh no my Haywin did die so how did I win okay I'm the red wow Yeah. Huh, that's interesting. Okay. Let me this is the first time I've watched this actually. Let me see. Okay, so now he switched to the confining spell. So so I mean I do respect GOD as like a player in the sense like he he adjusts. A lot of players when they attack me and they lose, they don't adjust, they just keep attacking. But he made an adjustment. I do agree that confining spell is better. Oh, and the, you notice how my confining spell stunned uh, his Vala. That was huge, because Vala is actually the primary source of his damage. And this time, I think the reason why I won was because this time my Haywin survived. And Haywin plus Damien combined is very difficult. Like, you cannot beat that. It's very difficult to beat. Uh, yeah. So fascinating. Yeah, so this is kind of what Champions looks like right now on server 25. Um, this is already a 30 minute video, but I just wanted to end things with some final thoughts. Uh, firstly, you know, uh, you know, defenses are going to be very important, but like you do need to make sure you're completing other battle modes and curating your wish lists such that you are getting the maximum number of resources that your account can possibly gain. So generally speaking, I tell people like usually uh, say on a live stream, for instance, I they send me a screenshot of their crew uh, as well as their defensive team. And the problem is not so much their defensive formation. It is what the characters they have, because they didn't really either. They didn't think about what the meta teams are, which are Aaron. It's basically Aaron. Aaron or Vala, or some variation of the two. Those tend to be the ones, the teams that do best in Arena. And so when you are curating your wish list, you want to curate a wish list that allows you to get a high score in the dr Dream Realm. And the reason for that is because uh, the Dream Realm offers some really amazing um, rewards on a daily basis, notably the uh, Temporal Essences. Temporal essences are extremely important because they are what allows you to bring your EX weapon from level 6 to level 10 or or beyond. And, you know, if you're top 10, you're able to get four temporal essences, which means that, you know, four times 30, 120. It takes 70 temporal essences to bring an EX weapon from level 5 to level 10. And I do believe that if you want to stay high ranked in arena which would be say like top i don't know top 20 then you you definitely need your characters to all have ex weapon level 10 and so like in my case without spending any money if i can maintain top 10 uh i can bring a character and a half to ex weapon level 10. so basically i can every two months i can bring three characters to ex weapon level 10 outside of collecting temporal essences from the tower from you know guild chests from you know the first time you clear trial of the abyss etc etc so if you want to farm these you know then you want to be top 10 in the dream realm uh, and uh, i would say you want to at least be top 50 because then you know, you get two temporal essences a day, that's 60 temporal essences a month. That'll pretty much, in combination with Tower or Trial of the Abyss, get, you know, one character per month to EX Weapon level 10. 
Uh, and what are the the characters you should work on uh, to be top 10? Well, let me tell you. So uh, there's four Dream Realm bosses, as you know. All four Dream bosses, the best, the characters that are best against all four of them are Corrin and Merrily. So I would say that you know, even before you build your Aeron team, I would actually get your Merrily and your um, Corrin to EX Weapon level 10 first, because they will be the ones to help you farm for more Temporal Essences to bring your other units to EX Weapon level 10. I would also, um, so I know that for my defenses I ran Scarleta, but I have won in the past with Arden in the place of Scarleta. So I would actually recommend that instead of Scarleta, you pull Rainier, be in an active guild, you'll get Rainier, you'll probably get like maybe three Rainiers the first month because, you know, of the guild challenges that give you extra medals, uh, guild medals, and then uh, you do need eight copies of Rainier to get Mythic Plus, but it will be worth it because at some point you know, two, three months from now, you're going to thank yourself for getting a Mythic Plus Rainier because Mythic Plus Rainier is required to be high ranked in Dream Realm. There's no exceptions. Like, you can't even make an argument against it because the only other alternative to Rainier that you have would be Kruger. Uh, and Kruger, that's the reason why I say build Corrin, build Merrily because Kruger shreds physical defense, 40% of it. And sometimes, like in this Necro Dragon fight, you actually want to run both Kruger and Rainier for maximum damage, just because Odi is actually not good on the stage, given that he's stationary DPS, not a mobile DPS like the others. Um, and then other characters to build to have a high Dream Realm score would be Cassidy. Cassidy is best in slot for two of the Dream Realm bosses. Uh, I can tell you which ones it would be. Oh, and this is actually an important visual. I'll just throw it up on the screen. Uh, if you guys want to find resources like this, you can uh, join my Discord. I'll, I'll have a link to it. But uh, yeah, this is basically a chart that shows you the optimal Dream Realm teams. So as you can see, Rainier Mythic Plus is best in slot for all the meta teams. All four bosses, Skyclops, King Croker, Necro Dragon, and Snow Stomper. Merrily and Corrin are best in slot for all four of the Dream Realm bosses, as you can see. Cassidy is best in slot for uh, one of the Dream Realm bosses because she's able to bless Merrily, who has very high attack speed. And basically, Cassidy does an undercurrent damage every for every X number of normal attacks the blessed unit does. Uh, and because, you know, Merrily has high uh, attack speed, so you'll get a lot of undercurrent damage from that. Odie is best in slot for one of the teams, Snow Stomper. Um, Smokey is best in slot for two of the Dream Realm bosses. I'm telling you all this right now because what I'm trying to say is that if you guys don't have your Dream Realm team squared away, then uh, your, your um, arena team, even if... Well, first of all, uh, how should I say? Um, even if you have the meta team, the EX weapon, like if you have a Haywin who doesn't even have her EX weapon, you know, or let's say you have only EX weapon level 5, or your Scarleta's EX weapon level 5, Arden's EX weapon level 5, it's just not going to be enough. Uh, you do need them to be EX weapon level 10, because level 10 is kind of like the sweet spot where you gain, gain another, you know, impactful ability that'll help you win the match. Um, what else should I say? Oh, another tip that I would say, so, uh, yeah, in addition to curating your Dream Realm team, uh, you, teams, you also want to be strategic with when you attack an arena. As you can see here, I haven't done a single attack already, and it's already, like, um, the daily reset is in about 11 hours, and the reason for that is because typically I will wait a little bit, wait for all the enemies to get their attacks in because when you do all your attacks at the daily reset what you're doing is that you're uh, bringing your rank up which makes it so when someone attacks you and wins they gain more points from you usually like I just basically you know uh, wait at least 12 hours for your enemies to get their attacks in uh, that way 
you know, as they continue to attack you, your ranking continues to go down and they get less and less points from you. Uh, and the, you know, the higher rank they are compared to you, the more points you gain when you win a defense. Uh, yeah, so normally I don't attack until maybe a couple hours before the reset. Now, um, this doesn't apply to my server, but you may have some sweaty people on your server who wait until, who maybe save a couple attacks until the daily reset. You can't really do much about that. Might as well get your attacks in, you know gotta have life too but uh yes anyways i really hope that this video helped um if you don't own some of the units that i introduced uh or if you have more specific questions i do live stream uh most days on twitch.tv forward slash turtle lags i do actually personally review your crew your wish list and even help you with team formations in arena that basically work with the characters you have um, but I am very real realistic too so I'm not gonna you know bullshit you and say like oh yeah you'll win defenses by repositioning your characters this way or changing this one artifact uh, but uh, I will at least try to give you advice that'll help prepare you to maybe not win a lot of defenses now but maybe like a week or two from now you'll start winning some defenses so anyways thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video take care guys